To complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. The Philippine National Police will realign their troops to be deployed in areas placed under Kamala control. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. Philippine National Police or PNP Chief Police Director General Oscar Albayalde revealed in a media briefing today at the PNP headquarters there are 941 towns in the entire country that are considered election hotspots. Of this number, more than half or 570 are declared under the red category or areas of grave concern. 238 are under the orange category or immediate concern, while 131 towns and city are under yellow category or areas of concern. The PNP chief further clarified not all areas under red category and under common control are chaotic. Categories are also based on the incidents in the past elections, he said. This is probably just to make sure, to ensure that deployment of uh, personnel there are enough. No, not necessarily kasi na nasa red area yan or areas of grave concern ay ibig sabihin magulo yung lugar na yon. The National Capital Region and the Locks Region are not included in the red category. Meanwhile, Alvayaldi added that PNP personnel deployment will be realigned to meet the needs in election hotspots. Mga naka-assign dito sa uh, national headquarters, we deploy, ben, deploy them to the different uh, critical areas. And we uh, basically create a uh, special operations task group headed by a uh, senior officer, at least yung uh, police brigadier general. More PNP personnel will be deployed in the entire Mindanao, Jones Isabella, Lope de Vega in northern Samar, Daraga in Albay, and the entire Abra province, which are areas declared to be under Kamala control. The Commission on Election will place a political division, subdivision, unit, or area under its immediate and direct control when there are circumstances such as intense political rivalry between or among candidates, political factions, or parties, the presence of paramilitary forces, private armies, or identifiable armed bands widely perceived to have committed terrorism fraud or other election irregularities in past electoral exercises or other analogous circumstances that threaten or tend to disrupt the holding of free, peaceful, honest, orderly, and credible elections. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Cam Krame. The Department of Education or Dep Ed reports that no teacher has withdrawn their election service in Mindanao, although the region has been declared as an election hotspot. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. More than 200,000 teachers are needed by the Commission on Elections or COMELEC to assist in the May 13 midterm elections. According to Undersecretary Nepomuceno Malaluan of the Department of Education, they have not yet received any reports of teachers' withdrawal from their election service. It can be noted that the poll body has declared several areas as election hotspots with Mindanao under the red category. I guess the, the local situation will still be uh, which still be important because even in non-hotspot areas, uh, uh, it, it's it's the usual. But but you can also be sure that the teachers have been have been there and done that uh, in the longest time that uh, we've been involved uh, as a support uh, um, uh, institution for the conduct of the elections. Debit explains that teachers have the right to refuse or withdraw from election service when a place is in danger or in a critical situation. In this kind of situation, trained policemen and soldiers will replace them as members of the electoral board. I think it, to the extent that the COMELEC has not approached us to talk about a crisis situation, then we feel that it's, it's still in order because under Republic Act 10756 or the Election Service Reform Act or ESRA, teachers are to serve during the elections voluntarily. Meanwhile, DEPED expects that Congress will still consider approving the proposed budget for the honoraria of teachers who will voluntarily serve on May 13 midterm elections. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. In other news, Bayan Muna went to the office of the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System or MWS today to appeal that Manila water be held responsible and must be penalized for the almost three weeks of water service interruptions affecting their customers. In a 21-page petition, Bayan Muna is demanding 
not to charge Manila Water customers for their water bills this March. The group also reiterated that residents who were affected by the water shortage should be given compensation. Gastos nila sa nakaraang mga linggo para lang makabili ng drum, mga timba, makabili ng bottled water ay napakalaki no, kumpara dun sa kanilang average monthly bills. No? State Weather Bureau Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA has noticed extreme weather conditions affecting the country. Section Chief Ana Solis of PAGASA's Climate Monitoring and Prediction Section noted that in the past El Nino phenomenon occurs only once in 10 to 15 years. But since the year 2000, the interval has shortened to only about 5 to 7 years. Pagasa noted the 2015-2016 extreme El Nino that greatly impacted the country's agriculture. Likewise, the prevalence of La Nina has gone back-to-back -back with the onset of El Nino. According to Solis, such drastic changes in the country's climate conditions are likely to become a regular phenomenon in the future. This is because of the effects of global warming. The official added that increase in humidity will also be a common condition in the evenings. Ito na yung nagiging climate normal natin, extremes na. So, ibig sabihin, mas hotter, and then mas wetter, or mas colder, and then mas drier. So, nag-shift na yung climate natin. Malacanang says there is no possibility that China can seize Reed Bank as alleged by the Supreme Court Associate Justice, Justice Antonio Carpio. This is the statement of Presidential Spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo over the issues on the Chico River Pump Irrigation Project, an agreement entered into by the Philippine government with China. Panelo pointed out that the lender cannot be blamed if they impose certain terms on an agreement. The Malacanang also reiterated that the Philippines never did not pay its loans. Reed Bank, also known as Reed Table Mount, is a large table mount in the South China Sea, in the northeast of Dangerous Ground, and the northeast of the Spratly Islands. I don't see anything wrong because I know it will never happen. That is precisely why I'm saying that perhaps the economic managers who enter into a contract know that it will never happen. And for the news abroad, here's Pauline Ompiko live from Tokyo, Japan. Good evening, Pauline. Good evening, William. Two Russian military planes landed in Venezuela's main airport on Saturday, reportedly carrying dozens of troops and large amounts of equipment. The planes were sent to fulfill technical military contracts, Russia's fighting news agency reported. Javier Mallorca, a Venezuelan journalist, wrote on Twitter that he saw about 100 troops and 35 tons of equipment offloaded from the planes. It comes three months after the two nations held joint military exercises. U.S. President Donald Trump can make his case for another term without fear now that the special counsel found no evidence of anyone conspiring with Russia during the 2016 elections. Nina Armilio will tell us why. U.S. Special Counsel Robert Mueller's conclusion that Donald Trump did not collude with Russia to win the presidency in 2016 gives the president a powerful weapon to use against his Democratic opponents and a potential boost to what is shaping up to be a tough bid for re-election in 2020. Mueller's conclusion that neither Trump nor his aides conspired with Russia in 2016 takes away a central charge that Democrats have flung at Trump for two years, that he did not win the presidency fairly or cleanly. Democrats have vowed to continue congressional investigations into the 2016 election campaign and Trump's business practices. But without the solid foundation of a Mueller report that found evidence of any crimes by the president, they now risk seeming to overplay the hand. The question for Trump now is whether he will be able to bring a maximum of discipline to his campaign messaging and to the presidency itself. History suggests he will have trouble with self-discipline. 
Just last week, he was immersed in a strange fight with a dead man, sharply criticizing the late Republican Senator John McCain and falsely accusing him of being at the root of some of the collusion allegations against him. He has also been prone to making baffling abrupt decisions, such as what occurred last week when he called off a round of sanctions against North Korea before they had even been imposed. To be honest, it's a shame that your president has had to go through this for before I even got elected. It began. And it began illegally. This was an illegal takedown that failed. And hopefully somebody's going to be looking at the other side. So it's complete exoneration. No collusion, no obstruction. Thank you very much. In the report, Mueller left open the question of whether the former real estate magnate had attempted to obstruct the Russia probe, which did find extensive evidence that Russia meddled in the 2016 election. White House spokesman Hogan Gidley said Trump had no plans to request that his attorney general open an investigation into the president's political opponents. Nina Armilio, UNTV. News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Pauline Ompiko, reporting live from Tokyo, Japan. An orphaned bear finds a home and parents right in the middle of an airfield in Russia. Abby Valdez will tell us why. Mansur the bear is an orphan. The Orishkovo airfield crew in Russia's Kaluga region found him on an airfield in Tiver region, but nobody had seen any trace of his parents. Since then, the group of pilots adopted Mansur in November 2016 when he was still a cub. Most of the pilots and aviation engineers participate in racing Mansour, but private pilot Andrei Ivanov's input cannot be exaggerated. Ivanov is the only person who can enter Mansour's cage and play with a bear without risk to life and limb. The key of establishing such a close connection was constant good-natured communication, says Ivanov, who over the course of the years has become Mansour's father. During the first year, he could not understand what hibernation was. He felt drowsy, he was sleepy, but did not understand what was happening to him. That is why we had to sit in the container, his lair. I would pet him, he sucked on my hand and fell asleep like a baby. They set up a YouTube channel showing Mansur's daily life and funny moments, as well as a 24-hour live feed of his area. The now 3-year-old animal weighs about 250 kilograms with a love for honey and fruits. Mansur has also attracted several visitors around the area. It turned out that he does not eat meat. He is vegetarian. Omnivorous, but he is vegetarian here. I think he is so happy. Perhaps he thinks he is free. Unlike bears and zoos, Mansur enjoys a relatively large territory to explore and play around. Ivanov, along with his colleague Andrei Petrov, spent between 30,000 and 50,000 rubles or 470 to 770 US dollars for Mansur's needs. According to a webpage for donations set up by Ivanov and his colleagues, they have so far managed to raise more than 3 million rubles or 46,000 US dollars over the past three years. Abby Valdez, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news. On March 25, 2019, on behalf of Rina Villamor Camara, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening. Akala namin ang araw lang inabot po kami ng isang linggo. 
yung tatay ko nga ako, hindi ko nga naidala sa hospital dahil dapat may ano siya, therapy ho, lagi siya ng tatlong beses sa isang linggo. Ang nangyari, hindi ko nadadala dito sa may polymedic, pati ang polymedic wala rin ng tubig. Hindi man lang nakonsulta yung komunidad o yung mga kalakhan ng mga tutubo mula sa Kalinga, lalo na yung affected communities. If we show the Chinese government that we are on time, regularly paying, or the, if you are the borrower, or the lender rather, you will know na yung mag magaling itong borrower na ito, hindi ka na kailangan mag-impose ang mga onerous conditions against them. Ito na yung nagiging climate normal natin. Ibig sabihin, mas hotter, and then mas wetter, or mas colder, and then mas drier. So, nag-shift na yung climate natin. I was a bit alarmed, saying, help, what's going to happen to the boat? What's going to happen to all our possessions? Why would I suddenly go off? Is the boat liable to, to capsize, sink, or what? We didn't know. So, uh, we were quite frightened. To be honest, it's a shame that your president has had to go through this. This was an illegal takedown that failed. And hopefully, somebody's going to be looking at the other side.